I'm honored to have with me today Mike Good from Super Speakers Club. And I'm really kind of undaunted to uh, have this conversation today because Mike has a great podcast of his own called Gratitude Spark. You know, what I've been trying to do with uh, True Stories from D6 and other contributors to this podcast is to find interesting people like Mike out in the district that um, are doing interesting things in addition to Toastmasters. And, you know, the goal has been to try to find out about those stories, see if they could share a little bit and find out about their journey in Toastmasters and see um, how Toastmasters has maybe informed these other interests that they have. So with that, without any further delay, um, I'm really happy that you could spend some time with me today, Mike. Well, thanks so much, Chuck. I really do appreciate it. I'm excited to have the conversation and I really love what you're doing here with this podcast. It's it's really cool to see how Toastmasters influences other parts of people's lives because it certainly has impacted mine in, in a huge way. So I'm excited to share my story. Well, that's great. Uh, well, that's that's a, a great way to start with my opening question. I, I'd be curious to hear more about your journey in Toastmasters. Absolutely. It's a relatively recent journey. I'm, I'm kind of young. I, I'm, I'm basically what you would call a rookie, I think. I'll start a couple of years ago. I was at a job and there was a Toastmasters group that met on the floor below me every Thursday. And it was always my intent to, to join that club. And for whatever reason, you know, either I was busy or I was scared to make the leap. I never went. Fast forward a couple of years, I think it was 2019. I decided to start this, um, start a, a Facebook group called the Gratitude Spark. And it was really a, a community of like-minded people all focused on how do you leverage gratitude to create change in your lives or in the lives of those around you. And as part of the Gratitude Spark, it was always my intent to do some public speaking, whether that be with you know, small groups or perhaps even organizations to talk about how gratitude can really play a role within the workplace and how it can create some really awesome changes in terms of employee um, satisfaction, employee retention, things that really do impact the bottom line. So my goal was really always to, to start doing more public speaking. So I, so I thought Toastmasters is a good opportunity for that. Again, I held off for a little, a little bit until I was asked a question by the son of some longtime family friends of ours. He was getting married. And one night he asked me if I would officiate their wedding. And I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> What an honor first. And then when I let it sink in, I thought, okay, that's my sign to join Toastmasters to really start becoming a little more comfortable with public speaking. So it wasn't long after that, probably within a week or two, I made the plunge. I did uh, go to a super speakers meeting and just to see what it was all about. And I tell you what, it was, it was awesome. It was before the end of the meeting, I knew I was going to join and you know, the group was just so welcoming and it was a great experience from the outset. Mm -hmm. Every touch point I had with people as I started to uh, become familiar with super speakers, it was so authentic and so genuine. And it just it really, they just they essentially pulled me in. It was something that I figured I couldn't pass up. Yeah, that was in February of last year. And, you know, I'm, I'm a year in, so I've made it through the first year. <laughs> Fantastic. I I wonder how many people I've met over the years that have told me that, um, like yourself, at one point they heard about Toastmasters, kind of got the idea of what it was about, and then thought, mm, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm not sure how this would fit into my life yet. And then some other event kind of made them take another look at it, sure. as, you're, as you just described, and decide to um, at least visit a club and see, see what it's all about. It's yeah, I think sometimes you just need those those little pushes in certain directions, and and that was that was the push for me, and I'm really glad that I did. I, you know, I have had nothing but a fantastic experience in Toastmasters so far, so it's given me a lot of great opportunities. That's great. Well, obviously, your very first meeting there was um, was a positive one, and that's always crucial. Make sure Absolutely. the guests are intrigued by what they see. Tell me a little bit about Super Speakers. Um, I take it it's a is it a corporate club? Yeah, so it it uh, we are based out of uh, I believe the old Super Value location in Eden Prairie. Okay. 
and yeah, it's it's a relatively small group. I mean, I think I'm actually uh, this year and last year I was the VP of membership. So we're trying to grow our group. So if anybody's out there in the Eden Prairie area or anywhere for that matter, <laughs> certainly uh, check out Super Speakers. But yeah, it's a small group. But one of the things that I really uh, do value about it is the the length of some of the members in, in terms of their tenure within Toastmasters. We've had some people that have been within Toastmasters for 30 plus years and and others that like myself that are just joining. So the the range of of skills and um, involvement in the club was really compelling. It was really intriguing because there were great opportunities to learn from people that have been doing this for a very long time. So, and and they're awesome. Like I said, they go out of their way to to make me to make people feel comfortable and to welcome them in, in and to coach them along the way. So, yeah, it's it, it's a great club. Yeah, I think that is important, uh, especially with well-established clubs, that you do have those those longtime veterans that, oh, yeah, you know, give that incredible strength to the club, and at the same time, they make it feel welcoming for that new person that just joined. You know that that Absolutely. person knows they're they're there to develop themselves. They're not they're not competing with those veterans. They're they're all part of the same club now, and they oh, can yeah. benefit from each other's experience. So that's great. Hundred percent. Yeah, I totally agree with that. They there is. A definite sense of camaraderie and you know we're in this together and if i go up and i give a speech and it's it maybe doesn't hit the mark it's okay this is an area that we it's a safe <laughs> safe area where we can try new things and and get really good feedback and coaching from from the other participants so it's in that sense it's really great okay well that's that's wonderful so then uh mike you were what I really was curious a lot, in addition to Toastmasters, of finding out about your podcast. And I haven't listened to all of your episodes from last year. I did start with the, um, I guess it was your last one. Was it June mm -hmm. 24th or thereabouts? Probably, yeah, the recap uh, of season yeah. one. Yeah, and you were kind of recapping the year. So I thought, well, this is, this is a good one to start with, where you could sort of give me an idea of what sorts of um, uh, people that you were interviewing, what sort of themes came up. And... I have to say, I was struck by the number of themes, uh, you know, the breadth of the um, the conversations that you had was quite astounding. And I was, um, you know, everything from entrepreneurship to just a myriad of issues dealing with mental health and so yeah. forth. And I was just kind of curious, how how do you explore these themes? Do they just sort of come to you or do you, you sort of think in advance, uh, you know, who would be a good speaker on that particular topic or owner? Yeah, we you share something well, about that. Certainly. The, the podcast is really the, the basic premise of the podcast is just to have real conversations with real, pe real people and to talk about how gratitude has weaved its way into their lives. And we all go through different challenges in our lives. And one of the interesting things that I've been able to pull out of it and that I've learned over the last um, 20 episodes in season one is that gratitude really does weave its way into the good times in our lives and it wave, weaves its way into the challenging times in our lives in terms of how we you know we we ended up with the guests that we did it, we do have a, a facebook group that i mentioned it's called the gratitude spark if you're interested in learning more about gratitude and and the role it can play in your life um, certainly check out our facebook group but we did have a lot of people come from that group i mean i think we have about two thousand people in the group right now so there's a lot of people that um, that do kind of live with a grateful mindset. So it was easy to pull people from, from that group. And so many people have just really compelling stories. You know, like you mentioned, we talked to people that have had uh, journeys with mental health, or we've talked to people that are entrepreneurs and have um, weaved gratitude into the way in which they lead a business you know, social do-gooding and just, um, you know, resilience came up a lot in terms of a theme over the course of the, the episodes. But yeah, it was, it was just a matter of having conversations with people and digging into how gratitude has really played a role in, in their life and the, and the changes that it really has sparked. That's kind of how we came up with the name, the Gratitude Spark. Gratitude is really a, a tool that you can leverage to create change in your life, mm -hmm. you know, be that becoming less stressed or um, happier or um, healthier. You know, it's just a spark that, or a tool that can be used to spark those changes. And all of these people had that spark. So it was really cool to hear their stories. 
So that's that's um, kind of state the obvious. Then the word spark, that's where it's coming from, that uh, it's a it's a tool to get you to to trigger or to spark other changes in your life then. Yeah, absolutely. It really started back when I was, it was, I think it was around 2019. There were a few things going on in my life that were pretty challenging. Um, one of my job was, was really hard at the time. You know, I was very stressed. It was to the point where <laughs> I think I would take the long route to work just so I wouldn't have to get there so early. <laughs> yeah. but it, you know, it was impacting my life within the workplace and outside of it. Um, you know, at the same time, our daughter turned 18 that year and she was decided she was going to do this adulting thing and go off to college and leave her mom and dad as empty nesters for the first time. So that, that was a new phase. Um, not long after that, my dad passed away. So there were a lot of things that were kind of coming together at the same time. And I was felt like I was in a bit of a spiral. And in order to kind of get past that, I started to be really intentional about um, how I practiced gratitude. You know, I started keeping the, the daily journal and really trying to be intentional about how gratitude showed up in my life. And lo and behold, it was pretty crazy. There were things that did change in my life. You know, I started sleeping better. I think I became a better husband. I became okay. a better father. I became, you know, in general, just happier. So that's I was kind of sitting, having coffee one morning. I thought, you know what, if this can work for me, maybe it can work for other people. So that's where we started the, the Facebook uh, group called the Gratitude Spark. And again, it's just really is that leveraging gratitude to spark what can be pretty amazing change in your life. Yeah, I would agree that it's, it's a great tool. Um, it's kind of a personal story. Right after the first of the year, um, um, actually it was my manager. <laughs> she sent to all of us a um a gratitude workbook i don't know what um motivated her to do that but i found myself the the proud owner of a um of a gratitude <laughs> workbook on the first of uh, january this year and i thought i love it yeah nice idea but i'm not sure what to write and i haven't been very consistent in it but what struck me was the number of times i would write something about a particular day and say you know, today seemed like a routine day, but I was actually doing things at work that I wouldn't have been able to do a year before. Mm. Somehow I, I feel like I felt more competent today. You know, so, you know, if nothing else, I could write something like that. I mean, that was actually a true observation on that at the end of the yeah. day. Or, and I've certainly had that feeling countless times in Toastmasters where I just feel like, oh, this isn't going well, this isn't going well. And then all of a sudden I'll have uh one interaction in the club and i think well you know push comes to shove I, I don't think i would have been able to do that a year or two before so you do I kind of see gratitude in terms of progress you yeah. know you find yourself in a different place it's just that the progress is called incremental we don't absolutely we don't notice it yeah i think one of the things that that i've learned over the course of my journey with being more intentional about gratitude is that it it's it's rarely the big things that make the biggest difference you know it it may be to your point noticing that small progress that you're making from from year to year from you know month to month whatever the case is and noticing it and being grateful for that as opposed to being grateful for the promotion or for the new car or the new home Obviously, we're grateful for those types of things, but I've learned that it's really the small things that really are the big things in terms of um, those things that can make a difference in your life. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Well, I, I'm certainly more interested in exploring this topic as well. With um, with Toastmasters, I was I was just kind of curious. As I mentioned at the outset, I was interested in knowing how Toastmasters has informed this this other interest of yours. Um, I suppose, first of all, I should ask, how did that wedding um, speech go? <laughs> well, I tell you what, so thanks to our uh, our pandemic of the last year, the wedding did get postponed. It was supposed to be last August, but it got postponed to this August. So I am about a month away from officiating my first wedding. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. The pressure is off a little bit because the couple did actually um, get get legally married last year so this is more of just like the celebration but they still wanted to go through the through the the ceremony and whatnot so while i while i'm going to officiate it i don't have the legal obligation of of marrying them so i feel a little better about that 
do you um do you kind of run <clears throat> run through narratives or scenarios in your head as to what you would like to say here well i've i've got it written out i've yeah. reviewed it with with the couple so it, it i definitely have notes to back me up but i'm looking forward to it now and actually that's going back to toastmasters when i when I joined Toastmasters again, it was in large part because of this request to officiate this wedding. I was terrified. But now as I think about it, and I've been through Toastmasters for a year and a half now, I am much more, I feel much more prepared. I'm not, I'm not nervous about it. I'm sure I will be, <laughs> but I, I feel much more confident in terms of my speaking ability. And I have nothing other than Toastmasters to to tie that to. So that's great. Yeah, wow. it's been been a huge godsend from that perspective. You know, I hate to say gratitude for the uh, for the pandemic, giving you more time to think about this. And there's not a whole lot of gratitude I'm feeling about a pandemic, but uh, but you did gain a lot of time to. Uh, Absolutely. To, to you know, just following up on that, I, I also do some writing. I, I'm writing for a, a magazine in Southern Minnesota. And over the course of last summer, and I guess probably for about six months last year, I did write about the pandemic and how, yeah, it's really hard to find things that you're grateful for during such a time of chaos and uncertainty. But there really are things that are there. You know, I spent was able to spend the entire summer with my kids and we had lunch out on the deck every afternoon at, at 12 o'clock. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity had it not been for the pandemic. Um, you know, there was, you know, time with family and time having the conversations, even if it's on the phone, mm. that were maybe a little deeper than they might have been otherwise. So, yeah, it was an interesting process. But yeah, I, I think it was really important to really search and try and notice those things that, that even though, again, those little nuggets that you could be grateful for. Absolutely. And I, I guess I also have to mention this technology. I think that we've all gotten better at over this past year <laughs> it allows conversations like this to take place. Um, yeah, I, I would certainly welcome the chance to meet you in person. Uh, someday, I'd love it. At least yeah. until that point, we have a chance to connect today. So we should, we should feel gratitude for the technology, I suppose. Absolutely. Even when it doesn't work for us sometimes. But. <laughs> That's right. Or when we're trying to figure it out. Exactly. Well, Mike, as I mentioned, um, as we were kind of leading up to today's interview, that I always like to end with a message. if. You know, we're hoping to reach not only Toastmasters in the district, District 6, but also anybody who might be thinking about Toastmasters. You know, as, do you have a message for, for, uh, for all of us? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if I look at my journey, you know, I mentioned that it could have started a few years ago, and it didn't. And I think there's always excuses, certainly for me at the time, there were excuses that I gave myself, you know, that I was too busy or at work, or I had stuff to do after work with the kids. There were all these excuses that I would give myself, when in reality, uh, the best choice that I could have made back then would have been to join. So I think, I think that it's really important to follow those, those callings that you have, you know, if you have a sense that this is something that you should do, I've gotten to the point where it's just a matter of jump in, you know, take that leap and jump in, especially with Toastmasters, because the jump in is going to be a soft one. It's right. only because of the, the warm welcome that all of our members get within our group. And I'm sure we're not unique in that sense. And, you know, I would be interested to see where I would be with respect to this, this wedding that's coming up, had it not been for, taking that leap and stepping outside of my comfort zone just a little bit. And I think it would have, would be in a very different spot. So being comfortable, being uncomfortable okay. is, is really important. And the more you can be uncomfortable, those are the opportunities where you can really grow. And that applies to, you know, joining Toastmasters or even during Toastmasters when you're giving a speech, some speeches are kind of kind of challenging. So hmm. it's okay to be uncomfortable. And I think that's a lot of times where the growth comes. Okay. Mike, that's a great message. And um, as I said, I, I, I welcome the day that we can actually meet. But until then, um, thank you again for uh, for joining me today. And well, thank you. Chuck. It's been a pleasure. I'm glad we were able to find the time to do this. And I would welcome that opportunity to meet as well. Okay. <laughs>